from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of Pegaworld Inspire. Brought to you by Pegasystems. Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Dave Vellante, and you're watching theCUBE's coverage of Pegaworld Inspire 2020. Karim Aganal is here. He's the Senior Vice President of Product at Pega, Pega Systems. Karim, great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Hi Dave, thanks for having me. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I wish we were in, in, in you know, face-to-face -face at your big show, but this is going to have to do. You're a little different this year doing, doing the, the virtual event. You're used to a big stage, big audience, lots of clapping and buzz. How, how's it been <laughs> for you, this sort of virtual pivot? Um, it's been different. It's definitely been different, especially since the last few years we had it in Vegas. So it was a big Vegas show. Now we're in my living room. Not the same vibe, but ne nevertheless, um, we have a lot of new products and new stories to tell, new experiences to share with the clients. So uh, we're focusing on, on those aspects. Yeah, and I'm excited to get into that, but I mean, your whole raison d'etre is you get build for change. And obviously we've been thrown this curveball more than a curveball, mm -hmm. like knuckleball. Um, maybe talk about um, what you're seeing your customers do in terms of being able to rapidly adapt to this new abnormal. Yeah, so we've seen, obviously, across the globe, right? Not just with Pega, not with just our clients. We've seen a tremendous amount of change. We've seen change in how we work, how we communicate, how we collaborate, how we get into meetings. And a lot of our clients, of course, had to quickly adjust to these, uh, to these recent changes as well in these last couple of months. And in many cases, um, they had to make technology choices. And, you know, we're pretty excited that basically Pega technology has been on that, you know, top shelf of technologies that our clients um, chose to leverage in this time of crisis. They chose to um, use the technology to, um, to better engage across their, uh, across, across their organization on the work that they do. They use the Pega technology to actually digitize how a lot of the work that gets done in their organization. They use it as a COVID-19 response. They use it to engage directly with their consumers. So it's been on the, um, as I said, on the top shelf of technologies that they had to leverage to, um, to, um, to adjust and transform. So it's been, it's been very busy, Dave. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, obviously a lot of companies have been hit and some industries have been very hard hit, you know, mm -hmm. shut down. But I, I want to pick a couple of examples. So let's start with healthcare. I mean, They've been hit like no other front lines. Have, have, do you have some examples that you can share or, or any example in healthcare, how they, they pivoted? I mean, have they been able to even spend time on anything that's not like emergency? Maybe you could share some of your experiences there. Absolutely, actually a lot of the other uh, healthcare organizations that we're working with, you know, the, the frontline workers, obviously, the, the way that they engage, um, has changed quite a bit, but also the people that work in the corporate, in the back office, in the technology, they have changed as well as they had to really respond to the changes in the, um, the scale of their operations, changes in how they engage with their, uh, with their customers, with the other organizations that they work with and how they operated their processes. We did have one of the customers that I talk about, HCA, uh, one of the pay customers, they basically implemented a Pega solution just in a couple of days and rolled it out into production in just a couple of days to keep track of their employees, the volunteers that are basically, um, that, they, that work with them, to keep track of um, people who are impacted by COVID-19. And they have about 200,000 people that they need to manage the availability in the schedules. And they decided to use Pega technology to be able to manage that uh, across the enterprise, which has been um, um, a great experience um, for us working with them. So, Krim, how would that work? So, they're ex they're an existing Pega customer, and they they spun up a new module. They they sort of de developed it themselves. You guys helped them. How Describe how that sort of became real. Sure. So, we actually have a couple of different examples of these types of um, um, applications that went live in the last couple of months. You know, from the healthcare organizations, we had it from the um, from some um, uh, organizations in the telecommunications industry. We had, you know state governments and uh, um, you know the different public sector uh, companies it, it works you know differently for each one of them but it's it's all starts with really having somebody having a clear idea on exactly what they want to actually do what do they want to keep track of what do they want to operate what do they want to be able to actually get done 
and having somebody that had that vision and being able to articulate that in the Pegasus construct to automate it, to define the process, to define what they're going to keep track of, to define the journeys of those things that they're going to keep track of. And a lot of the clients that have custom centers of excellence in their organizations with Pega experts, some of our clients work with our great set of partners who have come up with ideas and brought them into these organizations. And we also get pulled into a couple of these implementations. And like you said, Dave, you know, we always talk about being built for change. And this is a time of crisis. This is a time of change. And Pegasus technology is perfectly structured to be able to get things quickly done and up and running. But what, what it really needed at all times is somebody to actually have the vision and be able to make a decision and go execute on it. And we know that the people are there. We know the technology is there. And that's how a lot of the results got um, done. Yeah, very fast decisions had to, had to get made. Another example is that we've been, we've been tracking the, the, the telecom space and the whole work from home pivot has really put stress on distributed networks, uh, you know, the, the traditional corporate networks. Ah, now everybody's at home. We've all experienced this, whether it's you know, video calls, et cetera. You know, the kids are at home, <laughs> at school, sometimes gaming. So the, the internet is, it didn't blow up, luckily, but still, mm -hmm. major change in, in the telco industry. Absolutely, and how lucky we are to actually have access to, um, to all this technology, to all this um, internet ca ca capacity. And um, yeah, it's, it's been a big change. Obviously, the demand on their business has increased uh, quite a bit in the telecommunications industry. One of our clients that basically um, had contact centers in um, other countries where the agents actually didn't have an opportunity to go into the contact center and they couldn't actually enter the building. They weren't even allowed to be on the streets, you know, out on the streets. So um, what they did, and while this is happening, right, while basically the agents are not able to go to work, at the same time, the volumes are increasing through the roof, right? There's a tremendous amount of urgency and um, um, higher levels of volumes of requests coming in from the end customers, the end consumers coming in, right? It's basically, you know, a perfect storm of things happening. So what, what our clients have done is a um, couple of things. One, they created new sets of processes and they created a, um, an army of volunteers from within the business to be able to respond to customer requests from home. And two, they really completely ramped up the pace of taking processes and making them self-service available on the mobile apps, on the website, on the IVR. Because customers have, you know, the consumers have a sense of urgency. They need an answer. They need something to get done quickly. And they want to be able to, um, you know, avoid waiting online for four hours, right? We saw that. We saw a lot of the websites that says, hey, if you call our web, if you call our contact center, you know, um, some companies put up these messages, it's going to be so many hours. So our clients were able to take the processes that they have defined for their contact center agents and actually push them to self-service -serv channels, like the mobile channel like the you know, web self-service channel, as well as chat and chatbot channels, to be able to get the answers that the consumers need quickly and get their work done, respond to them quickly while in this time of amazing change. Yeah, so that enables you know, scaling, self-service is critical. Yeah, I want to ask you about digital transformation. It's a theme of, of Pega World Inspire. Uh, we've been a lot of talk in you know, the last three, four years about digital transformation. Frankly, a lot of lip service. I think it was Satya Nadella said we, you know, we accelerated. We pulled two two years of digital trans transformation into into two months. But again, you guys are all about digital and digitizing processes. So, kind of, I wonder if you can talk about, you know, that theme of the show, kind of what it means to you and your clients. I think I think it's been amazing. Um, I think, like you said, there's been a lot of talk about it, like several years, and there have been lots of initiatives. But I think it was missing the, um, the urgency that it needed to be able to get moving and get things done. Um, we have had so many discussions, so many people have talked about what do we need to do? Do we need to do it now? Can we basically wait? You know, you know, long meetings and long delays on making decisions to actually move forward. And this just basically um, changed all that, right? There's no more the question of 
you know, do we need to go through a digital transformation? Well, everybody knows. It's a yes. We had to do it. No question about it. There's no more question of the, can we do it? Yep, we know we can do it. Do we have the technology? Do we have the people? Yep, got it. All that is in place. Now, really, the, uh, the thing that we're seeing people succeed in is the ability to make a decision to move forward, to move forward aggressively. And having now proven that the people and the technology is there and that they can get done. And it really basically requires decisiveness and leadership. Yeah, I think you, you know, the word you use, urgency, because there was a lot of complacency leading up to this, but the good news was that there was also a lot of experimentation going on. Yep. So, you know, COVID obviously accelerated that urgency. Anna Gleis from Siemens is an example of somebody who spoke during, during your keynote. Big industrial, exposed with a you know, huge supply chain, which you know, for years, some of that's been really opaque, opaque and digitized that. Now you mm -hmm. get greater transparency. What, what were the key learnings from her discussion? Right, so um, you know, Anna, Anna and the team have done a uh, spectacular job. And you know, like I say, they didn't need a uh, worldwide, pan worldwide pandemic to get going. Um, it, and they basically approached very systematically with a great plan. And what they basically were able to do is really do that, you know, another thing that people have done a lot of lip service in the past is, you know, IT and business collaboration. They actually executed brilliantly from that perspective where the IT organization, technology organization, sort of delivered on top of the PEGA platform, delivered the platform to be able to manage all the technical aspects of business applications that all the processes that uh, seems needed. And in different departments, different divisions, we're able to leverage those assets and be able to quickly get applications up and running and being able to dramatically increase the speed of innovation while at the same time dramatically reducing the cost of getting these things done and running them. So basically, they built that environment where IT provided the technical aspects as a service to business applications so that they can quickly get things done, you know, automate their processes and deliver tremendous amount of operational efficiency into the organization. Now, Karim, of course, as the head of products, I want to get into some of the product discussion, some of the hard news that, that you have at, at, at Pega World is this notion of the Pega process fabric. I mean, the mm -hmm. metaphor is very strong. Uh, you think yeah. about, you know, digital, you think about a, a fabric, but what do we need to know about the Pega process fabric? Um, I, they, I, it's a, uh, it's a great solution that I believe corporations, especially enterprises need to be able to make their staff more effective, streamline their work, getting them, getting them, um, to a world where they don't have to personally navigate through dozens of different applications just to achieve an outcome. Because whenever you basically have a situation where an employee of an or enterprise has to jump through, you know, six, 10, 12 different applications just to be able to get something done for the customer, there's a tremendous amount of efficiency that's lost. There's a tremendous amount of training that's required to be able to actually get people to be able to manage all these, you know, working across all these applications. And of course, it's very easy to, um, to, to make mistakes. And whenever you have an environment that's built in like that, it inevitably gets exposed to the customers. And they basically, their experiences realize that there's a lot of jumping around. The process fabric is around bringing an experience to the users that is basically a single experience, even though work is coming from many different applications in the organization, right? You talk to any enterprise in anywhere in the world, and you basically name any enterprise software company, and they'll tell you, "Yeah, we got that." They have it. Yeah. They have the. Uh, they have the. Uh, they have um, Microsoft. They have Salesforce. They have you know ServiceNow. They have Pega. They have it. And users, employees, have to juggle through all of these systems to be able to actually get their work done. The job of Process Fabric is to actually bring all these tasks, bring all this work that the workers and then on behalf of the customers have to get done and weave them together into a single experience so that they don't have to jump around. They, there's much more efficiency, get work done uh, fast. And the organization then also has control 
around how the work is prioritized across different systems, how the work is managed to how it gets assigned, how to handle key customers and be able to see all the work that we're doing on behalf of them across all the different systems and be able to actually bring a home for all of these efforts and provide that um, experience to the, uh, to the user. So Karim, what's the secret sauce there? Is it a combination of you know, using APIs to those applications and machine intelligence and machine learning? Um, there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of a, um, you know, many things. It's the, the key is one, we basically, you know, come with uh, standard connectivity to standard enterprise solutions. Uh, we come prepackaged with connectivity to Pega environments uh, within, the, uh, within the organizations as we have many customers that have deployed dozens of different, um, you know, Pega applications. We come with a standard open API approach to be able to um, uh, provide connectivity. And then we use our decision capabilities and process capabilities to manage the prioritization, to be able to manage the you know, routing and uh, the experience for the, uh, for the end users. Okay, and the prioritization is something that's determined by business rules, is that, is that correct? Or how does that Absolutely. All Absolutely, so the idea is to be able to leverage the business rules capabilities of the uh, Pega platform to be able to handle the prioritization, the routing, and you know, sort of you know, collating things together that are associated with the same work streams and for the same customers. You know, when Alan uh, Treffler started Pega, it was right around the time I started in the industry and AI was all, you know, the, uh, the hot buzzword, and it took a while to, to get here, but it's, <laughs> it feels pretty real right now. How do you look at machine intelligence and, and the role that it plays. You use the term real, real-time AI. Um, right. What do you mean by that? And what's, mm -hmm. what's so special about your AI? Um, well, our, our real-time AI is real. So that's one of the main, <laughs> main specialties. But look, there's a lot of basically technology out there. There's a lot of great technology out there with great use cases that can look at historical sets of data and be able to actually generate predictive models from them. And those are great, those are very, very valuable. Um, but we believe that especially when we're directly engaging with customers, that is not enough. That you need actually real time, real, real time AI. Let me give you an example. If you were basically running some um, predictive models against a set of customer data, say basically in January and February and using them in March, you will not get the right results that are basically um, uh, for each individual customer because things have changed dramatically between you know, February and March. Mm -hmm. You couldn't make decisions about a customer based on what happened in their activity in January based on what's today. One of, one of our telecom, um, uh, one of our, um, I'm sorry, banking uh, clients, for example, use their customer data in the UK, NatWest, use their customer data and identified people that work with for the National Health Services and provided real-time programs that are specifically tailored for them, right? So that's basically being able to actually leverage the power of um, AI and be able to change how you engage with customers. The, uh, they looked at customer data who might be at financial risk due to the crisis and actually changed you know, you know, programs and payment programs for them because things have changed dramatically. In the, um, in, the, in the time frame. Our AI leverages predictive models based on historical data, which is great, but actually also adds on top of it the ability to evaluate real-time data based on the real context of the end customer. At this point in time, at this point on their experience on the website, on the IVR, on the mobile app, and be able to determine the best way to engage with that customer at that moment in time, and be able to deliver that one-to-one -one personalized experience. And um, this has been basically a, um, a, um, one of the major capabilities of Pega technology that, uh, that, that, that's how we differentiate in the marketplace in our ability to actually drive the AI capabilities in real-time interactions. What if I could ask you about you know, one of the trends in the marketplace and you're seeing it in the, in the equity markets, at least private equity, uh, uh, robotic process automation, uh, people I think you know, sometimes misunderstand you. And I've said, I've reported a number of times that RPA is just a small part of what you guys do. But at the same mm -hmm. time, you've seen a lot of energy in the marketplace, uh, money, you know, 
billions of dollars almost, you know, billions, yeah, have poured in. How do you look at, at RPA? Where does it fit in the PEGA platform? Um, yeah, so RPA is absolutely a part of the overall journey. We look at things from an end-to-end -end automation perspective. Essentially, you know, we need to do something for a customer on behalf of a customer to get an outcome delivered to a customer. And there's a process associated with it. And this process is, very, is, is frequently going to touch through a bunch of different systems. And some of these systems that it's going to touch are old. They've been around for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And they're basically, they're a uh, pain point for a lot of organizations. What RPA does really well is it basically lets you put a, a robotic process, essentially process that runs on the desktop, and to be able to sort of execute that process inside that old system automatically. But, and that saves time and saves money. And there's a basically you know, clear ROI associated with it. But it doesn't eliminate that old technology. It just puts essentially a, um, a veneer in front of it so that the end user doesn't have to key into some old application. It just does it on their behalf. We think that's a part of an end-to-end -end process automation. And as you go through different steps, you might have to um, execute these robotic process automations. But it's not digital transformation. You're not really transforming it, right? You are basically... Um, eliminating that pain point for a time being and it will become a problem maybe for the um for the next person that has to deal with it we believe that robotic process automation and is a great way to um to automate stuff but each one of those elements need to go through that transformation as a part of the modernization digital transformation journey so it's that systems view that you would stress, uh, and obviously you, you've always taken a systems view, you've got a platform that is an end-to-end -end platform. That's really what you mean by the end-to-end, -end, is that system view, correct? Right, what we mean really by end-to-end -end is a customer comes in and they have a need, and we basically get them what they come in here for. And whatever is in between, whatever processes and systems and integrations and technologies necessary in between, that's sort of the second part of the story. The main important part is work that needs to get done, we get the work done. Mm. And we will do anything in between. We'll do integrations, we'll do routing, we will do automation, we'll do business rules, we'll do AI, we'll do robotic process automation, anything that is necessary to basically drive that outcome, drive efficiency, faster response times, and better customer experience. Okay, so those are the key metrics. You just answered that other question. Last question then is, is you've got uncertain times. Uh, we've talked we've the, the gamut of digital transformation, but what advice would you give to customers given this uncertainty? How should they be best prepared? Um, I think it's most important to really to pay attention to the, uh, to the end consumers and look at it from a uh, perspective of empathy. What is the end consumer worried about right now? What is difficult for them? What is it that they need from your organization, given their current circumstances? And make sure that the experience that your corporation provides to them is the right experience. This is, a, I think, a time for a lot of corporations to build some incredible loyalty with their, um, with their end customers, with the consumers. This is an amazing opportunity to basically um, have great engagement and to be able to, you know, have people realize that, yeah, they were there for me. It was a e good experience. It was an easy experience. It was a seamless experience. And I would mostly emphasize on that empathy factor, to make sure that we understand what's going through, in, what's happening in their lives, what they need. And as when they engage with the corporation, make sure that we provide a, um, a seamless experience to them. I think that's a great point. We're not going back to the customer experience, uh, experiences of the 2010s. You know, we're entering a new decade. And, and uh, Karim, thanks so much for your insights and coming on theCUBE to share them. My pleasure, thanks for having me. You're welcome and thank you for watching everybody. You, you're watching theCUBE's coverage of Pega World Inspire 2020. Right back right after this short break.